This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Hey guys, thank you for uh, coming to the Boston WordPress meetup. Uh, my name is Kurt. And I'm John Bishop. Whoa, that's louder. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what number am I? Oh, one. All right, let's turn that down. All right. All right, so uh, if you haven't logged in already, the Wi-Fi code is WP0422 on the Cambridge Wi-Fi network. You can find us at bostonwp.org, at bostonwp on Twitter, hashtag bostonwp. Uh, first off, thank you to Microsoft Nerd for hosting us. Uh, they've been very gracious back to uh, 2009, April 15th. So yeah, round of applause for Microsoft Nerd. Uh, you guys don't know how hard it is to find an event space that could hold this many people, so we are eternally grateful to them, and we'll be here as long as they let us. Uh, another sponsor, HostGator. We've been using HostGator for quite a number, I think a couple of years now. Um, they have great hosting, great service. Um, if you need just one WordPress site, I, I highly, we highly recommend them. Um, use the code BostonWP Meetup for 25% off. Our pizza sponsor for this month and last month is WP Engine. Oh, I forgot raffle tickets. We don't have them at all. I do have, I have them anyway. Who wants raffle tickets? We're giving away shirts. Yeah? yeah. That's li really lackluster, guys. Come on. <laughs> the shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we if we get more enthusiasm, I'll get a t-shirt cannon for the next meetup. <laughs> I'm sure there's one on Kickstarter somewhere. Um, they are also a hosting company they, that specifically um, hosts WordPress sites. Um, you can use the code WP Meetup Boston 2013 for one free month for their hosting plan, and you can check them out at WPEngine.com. <laughs> we'll, we'll be handing out raffle yeah. tickets, and we'll, maybe, we'll do it maybe between sessions or something. Uh, the actual raffle. So uh, we have a website, bostonwp.org. Uh, you can go there to get uh, previous meeting minutes and videos. Uh, we have a job board. Contact us if you want us to list something. Um, we have forums. Uh, you guys can go in and start asking questions and talking to each other. And we have a GitHub account. We've started to do some, with, some stuff with it. If you guys have ideas, feel free to approach myself or our CADM um, and uh, hopefully get some collaboration going on there. Uh, if you need to contact any of us, my email's here, John's email's there, Tom and Reiko in the back, they're waving. Uh, Eric is not here, he's still somewhere in the ether. Cadam, who's giving a talk tonight, he's hiding. Where Why am I not seeing him? He just stepped out. Oh, oh, okay. oh. <laughs> I was like, he was here, he's even going to talk tonight. Jesse is also in the back, right there. And <laughs> Kelly and Mel, where are fine. So we have the uh, the Boston WordPress meetup. We have this space booked through September now. Uh, is it the, did we get the last? Uh, they're intermittent between right. second to last Monday and last Monday of every month, um, depending on holidays and availability. And we're gonna try something different. Uh, if you guys have ideas for talks, let us know now and let's try and schedule a couple of months versus you know a couple weeks before the meetup. Uh, just to get some other ideas out there. So if you guys have ideas, like we're, we're interested in all kinds of talks. So if you guys don't, if you guys want to speak and don't necessarily know what you want to speak about, come to us with some ideas and we can work something out. And we're also looking for people to speak at the, the more of the local meetups because um, this was just formally approved Yay. tonight, actually. Uh, WordCamp Boston 2013. Um, you can see the site, 2013.boston.wordcamp.org. Uh, it will be October 25th, 26th, and 27th. So it's a three-day affair, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it will be Halloween themed, so we require attendees to dress up. <laughs> no, but I'm just kidding about that. And um, we, we use the word agile, so you know it's hip and cool. Yes. <laughs> That's the new keyword. Um, it will be a little bit smaller than it has been at the previous years. Um, we won't be having this at Boston University like we did last year. Um, we should be here, actually. Microsoft should be hosting and sponsoring the venue. Um, so it will force us to be a little bit smaller, but we have an extra day. So 
So that means we could sell out fast. So um, we will make an announcement on through the meetup site. So that's probably the best way to find out. Um, we'll also make announcements at future meetups as far as how to get involved. Obviously, check out the website um, and we'll make announcements there too. You can subscribe to that RSS feed to get the announcement when we actually go live with the tickets. So. Uh, can you talk about why uh, you're not going to be back at PU? Uh, well, first of all, the dates that we wanted in the summer were completely booked. They're doing a lot of renovations, and that's normally the, the optimal time for us is summer, but San Francisco is also having theirs in the summer, too, so we couldn't compete with them as well. So we kind of had to push it back a little bit more, and the first available date that we could find for, for venues that would hold you know, size as large was here, and it was end of October. Otherwise, it would have been 2014 work camp. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so other meetups. John is here. He's up front. The Manchester, New Hampshire WordPress developer user group meetup. And Jesse's in the back who knows more about the Providence WordPress meetup. So if you're interested, talk to them if you look closer to them. Um, link up. Second Monday of every month in New Hampshire. Last Tuesday. So tomorrow. No. No, no. It was actually last, last, was actually last no. Tuesday. Yeah, I, I saw Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions? It also, yeah. Yeah. Wi-Fi login. Oh, the Wi-Fi login. It's uh, WP zero four two two. The network on the Cambridge network. Cambridge. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we also uh, sometimes forget to do this, so we'll do it now. Uh, let people call out job opportunities and stuff. So remember, we also have a job board on our website. Email one of us to get the listing up there. Uh, however, right now, if you would like to make a case for why people should work at your, your wherever, uh, raise your hand, we'll call on you, and you can um, promote your position. I work for a company called Astonish. Uh, digital marketing agency for the insurance space, and we are always hiring for talented front-end developers with a little design experience, experience doing a WordPress team. Pretty much every month, I'll say that. Cool. Mm -hmm. The mic? A graphic designer for a small job, but he's been told he has a billion dollar company. So, Kurt um, uh, and John have had their whole class. To be a small job, it could be big. Cool. I'm going to cheat and use the mic. Um, <laughs> I have a company that I used to work with a couple years back that's looking for a new freelance uh, WordPress developer would be a certain amount of um, consult consulting work, contracting work, mainly maintenance contracts on an ongoing basis up in uh, southern New Hampshire. So if you're a little bit mobile and looking for some freelance work, feel free to tag me after the meetup. Um, I just wanted to put in a plug for Cambridge Web Anybody else? Great. So any other, uh, oh yeah. Oh. Um, I'm having, I just went to the camp two years ago and I'm really enjoying the WordPress, but I have had problems with my um, store. And so I was wondering if you could find someone to help me with that. Great. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so for tonight's sessions, we're going to have two. They're going to be both in this room, unlike last month where we split the room in half. And this group's getting a little large, and we're trying out a bigger room, see how it feels. The fr um, we have uh, Kadam, who's going to be talking about oh, I'm correct, talking about Get Going or GitHub, um, which is a developer talk. And we also have Colin Matthews over here, a more of a late beginner, intermediate talk on live staging and migrating sites. Um, I know I'll be outside hosting office hours. Um, anybody else who is willing to help out? can join us out, outside, so, talk, chat. So basically, if you guys have any questions about WordPress, uh, something that you think that I know someone may be able to fix in like 10, 15 minutes, 
Um, or if you guys have any other feedback about job positions and that kind of stuff, uh, we'll be outside and we can kind of help you guys and direct to you if needed. So any other questions? One more slide. I have a question. Oh, yes. yes. Are you going to do these back to back? Yes. Okay. They're going to be back to back. We're going to start with Colin's talk and then we'll do Cadam's talk. And I'll run around like a madman throwing tickets at people in between. All right? Cool. Uh, finally, um, we are, I am, I know I'm very happy. Um, but for those of you who don't know uh, what happened last week, uh, Colin actually ran last week um, at the Boston Marathon and. He'd like, like to say he'd like to say a couple words. So, can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, last week um, I ran with my best friend, and um, it was my first marathon. And you know, I was really excited to get out there. It was a beautiful day and everything. And um, you know, obviously that changed very quickly. Um, so I wasn't able to finish myself. Um, my friend who's here with me today wasn't able to finish. And um, you know, it struck. Uh, close to home because you know Boston's my town and Boylston Street that's my street so I spend a lot of time um, so I was thinking about you know different ways I can help and stuff and obviously you know I've donated personally already um, to the one fund which is the official fund that uh, Mayor Menino and Governor Patrick have set up for the um, for relief for the victims um, but I thought that it was important to just kind of take a moment um, as the Boston WordPress community to kind of come together and, you know, whenever you have um, an audience this large, I think that it's an important thing to do um, kind of directly after an event like that that, you know, happened just across the river here um, to just kind of direct people um, to the one fund and, you know, anything that you can do um, would definitely help. I mean, even if the people that are here just tonight donated what you would usually spend at Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow. Um, you know, that could be a substantial amount of money right there. Um, so it might not seem like a lot um, to you guys if you do you know, five, 10 bucks. Um, obviously more is great, but you know, it's that pulling together and you know, telling your friends and family to do that as well. Um, so the onefund.org, um, actually sorry, onefundboston.org, um, that is the URL where you can go and donate through PayPal. And then also on my website, which I'll pull up um, at the end, I also have all of the slides and notes from my presentation tonight. Um, but on my site, I wrote a blog post with some links to other um, other ways you can donate through, whether it be um, the Red Sox have a custom hat that they're coming out with, um, where all the proceeds will go to the One Fund and Adidas, the Celtics. Um, there are a few other uh, donation programs like that going on as well. Um, so I just wanted to direct you to that real quick and uh, kind of take a moment out to remember um, everything that happened. Um, and thank you. All right. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight is live staging and migrating sites for clients. Um, so this is something that I've talked to a couple of different uh, friends of mine who own WordPress development agencies on. And they've kind of uh, done a little bit of a pilot program with their clients as they build some new sites. And they've been really happy with it and have gotten some good feedback. Um, from the clients that they've done it for. So just a quick show of hands, um, how many of you guys here either do freelance WordPress development or um, work with or for a company? Cool, all right. Um, now, have you, do, you, do any of you guys um, do live staging where, um, and I'll get into a little bit more um, in a couple minutes, but do you, how do you, um, like as you're building the site, how do you show it to clients for approval? Do you meet with them or, yeah? Yeah, I always build in a sandbox area first, just okay. sort of like the, you know, behind the scenes site. Yep. And then um, I'm, I'm always struggling because once once they get the approval and they green light it, right. then I gotta almost rebuild it or at least migrate it over to the live site and I try to keep a, uh, a mirror of it right. going to do testing and we make any modifications first yep. before ever doing anything on the live site. Right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. What I typically do is I set up two sites with two different URLs. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say an existing site, I build on a site that has a URL that is different, and then when I got the site ready to go live, it just switched to the DNS plane. Exactly. Cool. Yes? One more variation. Uh, yeah. I build on a locally hosted site, Okay. and then I use Okay, so you build on the uh, on your local host site, and then 
you push it out to their production site once it's complete? Right. Okay. Um, now, in the process, how do you, um, like, how do you show them to check in with them on progress? Do you meet with them in person or? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's typically those are a lot of the common configurations that I've heard for how people kind of handle um, doing a staging for a client site. Um, not actually, so to do a bit about me first. Um, so I'm the just real quick. I'm the founder and CEO of Sierra Pulse. Uh, that's a Boston-based WordPress and Shopify development company. So we do everything between. Um, Customizing themes, building themes from scratch, plugins and apps, um, content migrations, uh, SEO, security analysis, pretty much um, one stop shopping for WordPress and Shopify sites. Um, I'm also a freelance WordPress and Shopify consultant for smaller projects. Um, so that my website is colinmatthews.me. Um, and so if anybody here is looking for um, just some kind of guidance or tips or anything like that, I saw a few people on the uh, meetup comment section, we're looking for some help. Um, feel free to either contact me through there or I'll be out um, outside there for some office hours a little bit later on tonight. Um, also, I'm the creator of Think Corporate. So um, what that is is a social networking site that connects high school and college students who have a passion for web development and design. Um, so basically what I'm looking to do is just kind of bring like-minded people together. Um, you know, you can ask questions and stuff. It's kind of like if you're looking to get into freelancing or starting your own um, agency here in New England um, and you're a high school or college student, um, sort of like what are the type of things that you should look out for? You know, is it worth it to incorporate? Is it better to start out with freelance? Um, you know, just kind of more of the, you know, business of managing a, um, whether it be freelance or um, development agency as a student. Um, which is something that I know personally when I got involved with uh, WordPress and Shopify. Um, there wasn't anything like that out there for me, and so I kind of thought that, you know, now that I've gotten a little bit more experience and, um, you know, kind of have some of those answers together, and it's always good to talk to people that are like-minded and bounce ideas back and forth. So that site will be um, open to the public in the fall uh, for the new semester, and we're currently in beta, and I'm looking to add a meetup for the uh, Boston area in the fall as well. So if there are any uh, college or high school students, uh, feel free to stop by afterwards and talk to me about that, and I can set you up with the camera. All right, so what is live staging? Uh, we kind of went into that a little bit already. Um, sorry, that's cutting that off a little bit there. But um, live staging is building a site for a client on a real WordPress installation. So it's out on the web, it's hosted, it has its own URL, it's not a local host development, so you're not doing it kind of like as you had mentioned, um, building everything on a local host installation and then pushing it out. You can do that if you want for, you know, whether you're using Git or anything like that, because obviously you need to develop locally and then push out through FTP. Um, but, so you can use them in conjunction, but basically um, the goal of it is to give clients access to the site as you work. So this accomplishes a number of things. And the most important thing is they can see the progress that you're making. So they can kind of give you feedback as far as, you know, we need to be at this point by a certain deadline, or, you know, I need this piece of functionality for all that I'm gonna do, but the rest of it can all be pushed off later, um, things like that. And they can also see the moving parts. So um, I know um, some people have said that, you know, um, they do video conferences and things like that with screen shares or log me in, join me, those types of things. Um, and that's when you, know, you can see what the design looks like, but I feel like it's very valuable in the early stages to kind of give clients what the public would see so that they can see you know, that drop down doesn't drop down the way I want it to. It's too fast or it's too slow or I don't like the animation or you know, I want the sliders to kind of have a tiling effect instead of just sliding back and forth, things like that. Um, things that you can't really get out of PSD or sometimes are hard to verbalize. Um, I feel like it's a lot better if they can just sit down and pretend that they are their own customer, basically. So they're coming to their site and visit. Um, you know, what do they expect to see? What are they having trouble with? Um, test on different devices, things like that. Um, another really important thing is you can give them a feedback tab right on the staging site. And so there are a number of different plugins out there. Um, 
you don't really have to get that fancy. You could, you know, simply put out a contact form. There are a bunch of free plugins out there, and you can put a contact form just in the site there um, and label it, you know, site feedback, just so that they know that that's not actually going to be on the end product, but is there, and they can kind of leave you comments. Or you could get as involved as, um, does anybody in here use Zendesk at all? Use what? Cool. Zendesk. Um, it's a help desk application hosted. Um, they're really cheap. Their cheapest plan is $20 a month for, uh, sorry, $20 a year for three users. Um, and it's a good way to just kind of do like um, ticket tracking and things like that for different projects. Um, and so Zendesk actually has a plugin for WordPress where you install it on the site and then any WordPress users that you have set up on the site will automatically be put over into your Zendesk account. So it's kind of that um, bi-directional um, talk as far as the user database. Um, and so that's really cool. It just puts a little tab um, on the side of the site and they can click that and say, you know, I want this blue to be darker blue or, you know, we need to move this down here and put a bigger logo, things like that, right on the page. Um, so kind of think of it as like Google Docs, kind of instant feedback um, from any, anywhere within the site. Um, another helpful thing is they're all real URLs and links and media. Um, so sometimes de depending on what tool you're using for a local host installation of WordPress, um, you know, you'll have the file path to the file on your computer. So if it's on your C drive in the My Documents folder, things like that. Sometimes depending on what code editor you use or if you, you know, miss a backslash or whatever it could break. But the nice thing about this is it's on a live WordPress site, and so you can see when you go there, okay, you know, the path to this image is missing, or, you know, this link doesn't point you to the right place. Um, and so that kind of makes it easier to detect as you're building, and then also when you're rolling it over to the production server, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so how to get started. Um, how I like to set them up is to use a subdomain on your site. So you could set something up like clients.yourdomain um, slash, you know, for the presentation here, we're going to use Bob's Burgers. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you could set up any structure there, but basically what that's going to do is you're keeping it on your site. So you have control over the FTP and all the logins and everything, so you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about making a mess of your client's new hosting that they just purchased and then having to go back and clean all that up and put everything in place. Um, this is kind of just like your, you know, you get one, um, and I'll show you the file structure for it, but basically you get one folder on your um, installation, and then you just put all their stuff in there. And when it's time to move it, you just take everything from that folder and move it over. Um, some tips for that are install using a fresh, freestanding WordPress. Um, you might think that by, is anybody in here familiar with multi-site for WordPress? Okay, cool, so a few of you. Um, Multi-site allows you to have one installation of WordPress, but to add multiple sites within there. So kind of think of it like um, CNN, I guess, where they have their main site, and then within that, they have their travel section of CNN, they have their justice section of CNN, they have their uh, food section of CNN, things like that. And so those would all be multi-sites within um, WordPress. Um, but for this, it's best to do a freestanding WordPress installation for each client because that'll be the easiest for you to roll over to their live site when you're ready and it'll just be easier for you to manage as you're building. Um, the next thing is to use Jake Goldman's restricted site access plugin. Uh, so this is a free plugin that's out on the WordPress codex and what it allows you to do is once you install that, it gives you a series of options for security for the site. And so obviously you don't want it to be so that the site is open and indexed for SEO and anybody can just, you know, guess the URL and log in and, you know, see everything. Um, so what you want to do is kind of lock all that down. Um, there are some different methods for SEO, which I won't get into in this talk, but if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask afterwards. Um, but the restricted site access plugin is really important because what you can do is with that plugin, you can create a user in WordPress for your client and then once you have that activated, you can say that any, anybody who visits this site has to get redirected to the login page before they can view any content. So it's kind of cool and really easy way to make it seem like they're logging into a secure private site that's just for them, which they really are. Um, but it doesn't require any additional work by you guys for security. 
Um, so that's really cool. And then, um, like I mentioned, if you wanted to add the feedback plugin, um, that's really the only other thing that you need to add if you wanted to. Um, this is a screenshot of the Zendesk plugin, and so it just puts a little tab on the uh, on the side of the window, and then when you click that, it just brings up a light box with you know basic form fields, and they submit that, and it goes right into your Zendesk, so you use it, uh, Zendesk API, and there are other help desks that allow you to do that as well. So now we're going to get into the hard part, which is actually pretty easy. Um, and we're actually going to do this together and migrate a real website in the next 10 minutes. Um, so you guys will be able to see step by step with the words uh, real WordPress site, how to do this. So what you'll need before you get started is you'll need from the staging site, which is um, theoretically your site, you'll need your FTP username and password and then also the login to the MySQL database and the username and password for that. Um, typically, most hosts will give you that information. Um, I actually can't remember running across one that hasn't given me that in quite a while. Um, but if you ever need to go back and get that, if you go into the wp-config uh, file in WordPress, that'll, uh, all that information will be listed out there. And then from the production site, which is the live hosting that your client is going to run their site on, you'll need, again, their FTP username and password, the MySQL URL username and password, and then also a fresh installation of WordPress. Um, and hopefully it'll be a matching version on the latest version of WordPress. Um, there's a whole list of reasons I could get into for using the most up-to-date version of WordPress, but basically the short version for everybody who's unfamiliar with that. You just want to stay up to date with um, both the WordPress, the main WordPress core itself, and plugins and themes, um, just for security uh, vulnerabilities, speed, compression, things like that. Um, and sometimes SEO is involved there too. So always just make sure that you're running um, the most recent version of WordPress, and if possible, um, there are some times where, you know, upgrading your WordPress can break certain things or whatever. So just be cautious of that before you do. Um, but best practice is to be on the most recent version of WordPress. All right, so let's do it. So first we're going to log into the staging FTP. So I've done that over here already just to save some time and have my passwords. Um, so right now we're in the Bob's Burgers uh, URL for the FTP. And Bob's Burgers is right here. So this is Bob's Burger site, and this was built, if you look at the URL here, on mine.crpulse.com slash Bob's Burgers. So this is where I was staging the site, and then over here, Bob's Burgers Live, this is where, for the sake of the presentation, we're going to say this is bobsburgers.com. And so this is where we just finished the site, and now we're going to roll it over to Bob's Burgers new hosting that we purchased and um, yeah, <laughs> so um, what we want to do is we want to export all of the content, so the images, um, the posts, everything that we've got from the theme, everything that we've uploaded to our staging site, we want to download all of that so that we can then re-upload <laughs> it to the new site, and then we're also going to go into the MySQL database here and do an export, and the, uh, the MySQL database is where all of the information is stored. So in WordPress, when you go and create a post, it creates some entries in a database table with you know, who created it, what the title is, what the content is, um, basically all of your metadata. Um, so we're going to do this in two steps. So the first step here is we're going to log into the FTP, and we're going to download only the WP content folder. So we're here, and we're going to download, we're in Bob's Burgers, and we're going to download WP content over here, the whole folder. So that's going to drag your themes, your plugins, your uploads, anything like that. Um, so those will be all of the files that run the site. And then as that's downloading, we're going to come back here, log into the staging MySQL. So theoretically, this could be on your server or um, some hosts like WP Engine, um, who's hosting uh, tonight, they offer you a live staging site as well. So say your client is bobsburgers.com and they're hosted on WP Engine, WP Engine gives you a one-click button to copy the Bob's Burgers site onto a staging site that's also hosted on their WP Engine account. Um, so if that's the case, then you can do it right on 
the client's hosting and just move them back and forth and not really need to worry about you know doing it on your site and then moving it over to theirs things like that um, they offer a pretty easy back and forth system um, so we're going to log into the staging MySQL which we've already done here and then we're going to export all of the tables so we're going to come here to export And then I'm going to be putting up um, all of the slides for this presentation um, on my site along with any notes. And if you guys have any questions um, or get stuck at any point along the way, um, just feel free to give me a phone call or um, fill out the contact form there. So once we're in export, uh, we're going to click on this one here, which is the WordPress, um, the WordPress tables for everything. Um, whether it be pages, posts, um, custom post types, plugins, anything like that. They're all contained within here, so we're going to select that one. And then typically all of the default export options will be fine. You're going to want to make sure it's SQL, but it should default to that. And then the only thing you'll want to be able to, uh, the only thing you need to change is you want to save the file and you want to end zip compression. So you do that and hit go. And so it's going to bundle everything up into a .sql file, which is uh, basically like an Excel file, um, if you want to think of it that way. So I have it over here. And so I just downloaded that. And now we're going to, so we've installed WordPress to the production site. Oops. I think the slide's got a little out of order there. Um, but what we're going to do is open up uh, the SQL file, and so this is all of the information that is stored um, <coughs> within WordPress. So these are all of your posts, all of your links, pages, um, images, anything like that, theme uh, settings, all of that gets stored in here. So what we're going to want to do is within the, um, within the database, WordPress will put in the URL as it goes. So if you're referencing a specific image or a link, it's going to save that with the URL. So the problem right now is all the URLs that are in this SQL file are URLs from the staging site. And so we need to change that to be the live site. So what we're going to do is we're going to do find and replace. Um, I use Coda as my um, editing platform here. So we're going to look for my uh, Sierra Pulse dot com slash Bob's Burgers and we're going to replace that with my com slash Bob's Burgers live. So this here is, you, that's where you would put um, whatever the live URL is, so bobsburgers.com um, but just so that I can show you guys, I don't own bobsburgers.com um, but just to show you guys, I have a second site set up called Bob's Burgers Live. So we're going to hit replace all, and so it found it here 23 times. Um, that's because it's just a simple one-page site that I have set up. Um, larger sites, you could be finding hundreds, if not thousands, of those URL strings. Um, so it replaced all of those, and we're going to save that. And then also, there we go. Um, so note the table prefix in the new SQL database. So here, you can see WordPress uh, traditionally when you install it has the prefix of WP underscore um, for all the tables. But depending on your host, and right now this um, particular installation is on DreamHost, um, some hosts will add another unique identifier in between there to just kind of separate the sites out and make it easier for you to find if you're viewing a list of multiple sites. So what you want to do is take that right there. So that's the prefix for the new tables. And then in the old, so this is the old one, and the prefix is different. So if we were to just simply download the existing SQL table and then upload it to the new one, it would be there and that would be great and everything would be formatted correctly.
but when the WordPress score itself actually goes to look for those files in the database, it's not going to be able to find it because the name isn't correct due to the prefix. So we're going to come back to here again, and we're going to do a find and replace all here, and that replaced 51 table references. So now we can save that. And we're going to come back. So this is now the the live MySQL site. So we we'll forgot to load. And then here in the meantime. You can see that all of the WP content uh, folder is downloaded. So those are the plugins, the uploads, and then the default themes that come with WordPress, which is what I'm using. Okay, so we've got that. So now what we want to do is we're in the live site MySQL table. We want to check all and then drop these tables. So it's going to ask you, do you really want to drop them? Yes. So now we have no tables found in the database. So now we want to come up here to import. We're going to choose a file. And we're going to choose the SQL file that we downloaded from before. And then all of those options are right. So we're just going to hit go. Oops. Create database. OK. Maybe one more step. Okay, there we go. Um, so another thing was the database name, which was, it used to be um, a bunch of stuff, com underscore five, and we need to update it to com underscore six. Um, so I'll make note of that in the presentation notes as well. So we just did that. So now we're going to come back here and re-upload that, and that didn't happen. One of the tricky things to note about this too is, depending on your host, the PHP MyAdmin version that they run and the way they handle tables and things like that can vary. Um, so you might run into a couple issues there, but. Does it work this morning? Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's strange. Has anybody run into this before of not being able to delete one of these? These are tables for WordPress? It says no privileges here, but this morning it didn't, so. <laughs> um. You've got a permissions problem, so I think that it needs to be my own. Well, it did it, so. Great. Okay. Um. All right. 
Sorry? Because we want to be creating a table there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> um, I, to be honest, I don't know. Um, so we'll go back here. So we'll just check all, drop, no, not for you, drop. Yes. Cool, okay. All right, so once you've dropped everything out of the database, what you want to do is come back to import, and then, so up here, these two uh, create the database. We commented these out, um, which this morning it didn't need that, but I don't know. Um, so then you upload that file. Go. Okay. So now that's everything there, and then you want to come back to your FTP and we've downloaded everything from WP Content. So what we want to do is going to, now we're in Bob's Burgers Live, and we're going to delete the WP content folder there. So that's deleting, when you install WordPress, it gives you a collection of default plugins and themes. So that's the 2011, 2012, and now soon to be 2013 theme. Um, and then themes like um, Hello Doll, uh, plugins like Hello Dolly and things like that. Um, and so we want to just clear all of that out of there. So then once that's done, we're going to re-upload, or not re-upload, but upload our WP content folder from the staging site. So that's gone. So now we're going to toss that up there. So now we're uploading WP content from the staging site, which includes the customized theme that we did, the plugins that we installed, um, and media from there. And almost there. Then we'll come back here, and this is my CFO's Bob's Burgers Live. So this is their live production server. This is still, let's see, still uploading.
There we go. So now it brought over the post from before. So as you can see, that post there. And then we've got the menus and the title. Um, now something to note, and I did this, um, I picked this option here um, on purpose, was that sometimes your customizations for themes won't always translate over. And the other option, and we're not talking about like the entire site, all of your content will be there, so pages, links, menus, all that will be there. Um, both in the 2011 theme um, and certain other premium themes, they have a theme options panel. And so there are two ways of going about that. Um, you can either check the SQL database or if they're saving theme options into the database, some of them do and that um, should take care of it. Or, they have um, a import-export option for the theme options panel. So if you set everything up and there's an export um, box in the back end, what you can do is copy that and it'll look like a bunch of random uh, letters and numbers. But what that actually is, is the those are the settings for the theme options panel. So the path to the logo that you set, what color you want to use for the fonts, things like that. And you can just grab that and um, paste it back into the theme options panel on the new site. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that have all the options on the database? It should. There are some um, there are some things. And the other thing to um, note is permalinks as well. Um, there have been a few times where I've moved it over and permalinks don't carry over. So um, they're saved in the database. The only thing you'll need to do is go back into the WordPress options and reset those permalinks. So if you have a structure of, let's say, slash category slash post name um, as a custom category for your permalinks, uh, custom arrangement for your permalinks. What you'll need to do once the site is live is just go back to that permalinks option and just activate the custom permalinks with that path and it will do, uh, automatically do that. So it'll, it'll save um, all of your links. You'll just need to reactivate that switch basically. Yep. That's for if you're building on their um, live site. So sometimes um, I'm actually working on a site for a client right now where they have their live site is a coming soon page where they're collecting um, info for basically a sign off. And so they need their domain and their WordPress installation doing something else at the moment, but we need to keep building their current site. So this is basically um, offering a staging site so this is on my hosting. Well, they're using their separate hosting for something else. Um, if you are right, though, that if you're doing it in place, and so this is more talking about migrations between sure. the two hosting. So what I would want to do up front, if I were doing that, I'd say, you know, well, let's put a subdomain on your site. <laughs> you know, all I need is some space and a, and a uh, directory. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'll just put it there, and then we can switch it over easy, and then you know that. Necessary. Yeah, you could do that. Um, it depends on how much storage space they have. Um, also, some uh, hosts have a limit on, depending on what plan you have, they have a limit on the number of WordPress installations that you can do. Um, so for example, the GoDaddy um, economy plan, I think it is, you can only have one database with one WordPress installation. Yeah, but um, 20 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month to get as many as you want. 
Yeah, I mean, and that, you know, that's something to keep in mind is that there are a bunch of different um, configurations. It's depending on the host that you're with. It's depending on the package, depending on the project. Um, but th this is just kind of in general, um, you know, if you're staging it on your own site, um, just to kind of give them a URL to go to, or sometimes they don't have hosting yet. The other thing is that as far as the URL references in the database, mm -hmm. if you've got it done nicely in terms of your WordPress structure, you yep. shouldn't have any full URLs in the database in the first place. It should all be relative URLs by using the, uh, the, the, the constant Yeah, so uh, I, I think you just caught what I was going to say, but could you just say a little louder? <laughs> Yeah, so basically in the code, obviously one of the very important things is you want to make sure that links to CSS, JavaScript, anything like that, images for the theme, plugin, whatever it might be, that you're developing, you want those um, to be um, kind of universal basically. So you don't want to hard code a URL in there because then if, say, your client changes the domain or something like that or you go to install that theme or plugin on a different site, that's going to break because it's pointing to things that don't exist there. Um, but on the, um, within WordPress itself, like if you have, say you insert an image into a post or a page, that image tag is going to have full path URL. And so those are where um, the full URL would come from, not the coding itself of plugins or themes. Yes? I just want to walk, talk about one other thing here. I mentioned it briefly, but I made an earlier statement about how I do stuff. I don't make any money off this, but if looked at the Backup Buddy plugin from iThemes. It's an excellent migration tool for going from one server to another in particular. Right. And really sort of hides all this stuff behind the scenes. It, you know, the downside is A, it's not free, and B, not all um, hosting vendors will support their architecture and how yeah. backups are done. It's basically as simple as you take backup, you upload it to the new site, you run a import script, so I think this would be a good option if you know, you're concerned about the cost, A, or if it, it doesn't run on, on your particular listing vendor. Right. Uh, one sec. Uh, in the back, yep. I, uh, I'm also a backup point user, but I found it to be really very difficult when moving from one hosting service to another hosting service and making sure that all the variables that backup with a plugin called, I think it's called WordPress Move. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's worked pretty well for me. It's, it, you can either back up or you can migrate. Okay. And it has a, just has a place where you fill in uh, the new URL for your, your new site. And it'll do all of, all the edits that you just did manually. It's built into the, to the, uh, the plugin and it, it does those edits in the course of, um, of uh, exporting. So I've had pretty good luck with that. Have you ever tried that one? Uh, I have not. Um, this is how I started out doing it a while ago. Um, and I think it's it's been solid as far as moving between different hosts or different, um, you know, it basically, you know, no matter what your configuration is, it's the most standard way. You know, SQL is my SQL. The, the WP content folder is the WP content folder. Um, I'd be interested to definitely check that out. You said uh, WordPress move. Called? Okay, and it's in um, the plugin. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, definitely check that out. Yes. One other suggestion, an alternative way to handle uh, the access control. Mm -hmm. The one that I've been using recently is Page Security by Contexture. Okay. That works 
very nicely as far as controlling access to individual pages or protections or for the site as a whole. Yep. Also, there's one called Peter's Login Direct. Okay. It's very handy if you want to direct people to a particular page when they log into the login rather than to the, so because if you do with clients, sometimes you don't want your clients going to admin pages, you want them just to go to the site pages when they, when they log in. Right. And that's a handy way of directing them to the, to the pages you want them to see. Yep. Yeah, um, the plugin that I mentioned earlier uh, from Jake Goldman does do a lot of that stuff. Um, but there, yeah, there are definitely a bunch of. What was the name of that? I want to check that one. What's the name of that? that one. Uh, let's see. You're gonna have your slides up, right? Um, yeah, I'll post the slides in a little bit uh, later on tonight. But that one, oops, restricted site access plugin by Jake Goldman. And then there was one more. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, and that was that's actually goes along with um, what I started to say a little bit earlier was that sometimes when you're using theme options panel or um, kind of theme customizations within the um, WordPress has a theme customizer built in, so that certain themes that are compatible with it, you can change their um, you know the background color or the banner, or the logo, things like that. Just very standard options. Um, and sometimes, depending on, like you said, serialized data, or um, if it's a proprietary, there are some theme developers that use proprietary theme option panels just to kind of make it a little bit easier on them as they develop. Um, some of those theme options panels, because they are proprietary, um, they use a different way, uh, kind of a different method of storing that information. And so sometimes those won't transfer over. Um, but the good ones, you can just um, copy and paste. There'll be kind of a, like I mentioned, um, a text box for the import export option. And it'll just have a bunch of, um, you know, like I said, a couple hundred lines of letters and numbers mixed up. And if you copy and paste that, um, that will actually carry over all the settings. Um, yep. You could do that. Yeah, you could you could definitely do that. Um, let, you know, like I said, there are um, a bunch of different ways of doing it. It's kind of what fits best with um, how you're working on the client's project. Um, you know, if you're doing that, that's okay if they have a URL and they're not live to the public yet. But if you're redesigning a current site or um, if you're building a site, and then like I mentioned, one of the clients that I'm working with right now they're actually using their domain and their hosting for kind of um, like a welcome, you know, please sign up to get notified type of thing with a little bit of information about them. Um, so they're actually using their domain and hosting and then we're um, just building everything in full separately. Yep. I, I found that migrating from one service to another service is real pain Yep. Yep. And once the friends were live, I knew virtually no migration of the database is set. And I do edit a couple of files, they see access, and they're live in five minutes. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's another way to do it. Um, not really. I mean, if you're just, you know, one of the things to make sure of is if you've got a hosting plan, just make sure that you can have more than one database. Um, and then another, uh, you know, really the only other thing would be, um, not even that, I guess, but um, you know, it, it does work. Um, how the reason I'm doing it this way um, with Sierra Pulse is just that's kind of the structure that we have set, and we have a very integrate uh, kind of integrated workflow with different tools such as Zendesk and things like that. Um, and so this is just um, to kind of give you one configuration, and configuration that I use most often and are familiar with. Um, so that you know you've got a copy of it on your site, and you can you know go in and mess around with stuff and. You know, if you break something, you know you're hosting well enough that you can roll back or, you know, you, you've kind of got it set up the way you want it and know it and like to use it. Whereas if you have um, some different, you know, working with different hosts and things like that, they can be different and, um, you know, have different requirements and things like that. So, um, you know, it's just kind of a snapshot of one way to do it. 
Um, all right, so I think it's just about time for Adam White to give his presentation. Um, but just to get back here, um, so I want to thank you guys. I um, definitely had some good questions and comments. Um, I will, uh, I'll be out there for our office hours for a little bit. Um, so if you have questions or want to follow up more, things like that, um, please uh, feel free to. And then also my site is colinmatthews.me. That's Colin with two L's. Um, and probably by tomorrow morning, I would say, I'll put up all of my um, slides along with presentation notes and links to anything that you guys may have brought up um, that could be beneficial to you guys. And then on Twitter, Colin J. Matthews. And if you guys want to go and rate me on speaker rate as well, that'd be good. Uh, hopefully, I'm looking to help out with uh, WordCamp this year as well. Uh, so I want to thank you guys again, and just remi uh, remind you one more time to go to onefunboston.org and uh, donate to that as well. All right. Thanks, guys.